Hello, Lorcan here. And in this video, it's the final practical video and I just want to go through some of the things I forgot to mention in the last two that I realized when I was editing them. So, uh, just really small things here. So for example, when you're working with your player characters, something that was recommended to do by one of my lecturers uh, when I, in my second year, was that you usually want to add uh, zero friction sometimes for platformers. Um, this can come in the standard assets or you could make, uh, I recommend you just make the physical materials of these settings, just zero for all of them. That well, what it does basically is it means when I go up towards the wall and go to sort of jump by it, I'm not going to sort of get stuck or slow down by the wall surface which you usually want in platformers. The thing to note though is if you do turn off all friction, if I turn down drag and I move, all right, this is using move position. But if you're using something like add force and you did that, your guy would just never stop moving. So because if I had this guy get collided by something, I think if I um, got the slope, it should probably do that actually. There we go. And you just keep on go going. So if you do zero friction, add drag, I put three there because it doesn't affect the gravity speed at the moment, but it's just something worth considering. The other thing is for anyone that isn't aware of it, I bring up inputs. If you go down to the project, scroll down to here, inputs, these are your inputs. And they're just, if you know about get buttons, they're just ways to uh, have a, Unity has a bunch defaulted already. Fair way just to give a title to a specific input and not have to worry about if you change, want to change the button down the line, as long as you kind of give it a generic title like attack button, jump button, one button, you'll be fine. So I've added a few more here. I'll probably delete the ones I don't need when I export this project out. And I think the last thing in the editor itself just to go over is when you're testing any game, um, especially player movement and the like with animation, make sure to test it out at different frame rates. So if I go here, the game's currently running at about 80 frames per second. If I go down here into project settings and to quality, what I can do is I can go to fastest and all of a sudden that jumps up to 2000. And it's worth just checking if your character's moving right. So the stuff I mentioned in the tutorial about adding stuff into fixed update, if the movement wasn't in fixed update right now, this guy would be, and you can test this out yourself, this guy would be moving much slower. He'd be walking the same animation speed. The animation would be the same, but he would be traveling less distance per second because the frame rate would be higher and dividing the movement by much more. And it just wouldn't be keeping up to date with it properly. So that's why you use fixed update. And that's why in every game, you should just test this just to make sure that everything's consistent across different frame rates. So when you release your game, it's on different devices. You've got that covered. While I'm here, I also thought I might as well just go into a little bit of detail about some of the things in the sort of uh, final version of the player code I've got here in the basics. So for example, I mentioned this in one of my smaller videos. When I go off the edge, when I have the magenta line, there's actually a buffer there for a few seconds when your character's no longer above the floor, you can still jump. That's a, that's one of, if you look online for development blogs that talk about platformers, they usually mention there's a bunch of extra things that add into the player, such as reducing the speed of falling when the button's held down, that kind of thing, to make the jumping feel a bit more polished. So that's one of the things they can do. If I go into the code, I kind of, I briefly went over this at the very end of one of the videos, but I'll try and go into a bit more detail about the practicalities of how this is working. Um, so the main thing here is an extra Boolean is, a few extra values have been made. There's an extra boolean called grounded. That's just a yes or no value to let the script know when we are on the ground or off the ground. And basically if jump is valid, jump allowance has been added and that's essentially a countdown timer and the jump buffer has been added. So the way this works, this code here allows me to, I'll show the extreme example in here so you can kind of definitely see what's going on a bit. So if I, increase this to one whole second. So this is going to give me an extremely wide berth for falling jumping. If I go here, you can see there that even like I'm falling for like, I uh, actually increase that a lot more. So it's like really drastic here. So I can literally never not jump. 
There you go. I can basically jump in the air if I've got that on after I've fallen off a bit. So it gives me a lot of... That's where the magenta line is. That's how in this code it shows when that's being done. And that just gives you a lot of uh, range. Which you can use that for other things, obviously. But anyway. Um, so the way it's changed is we've changed the um, code quite a bit from before. So now it's... Uh, it checks... You, the jump is no longer inside the raycast, the jump is outside of it. And what it is, is the raycast just checks if the player is grounded, then set grounded to true, set the animation grounded to true, and also reset, reset vertical speed, and reset the jump allowance. And now we've got this middle state of if the raycast doesn't detect ground, it then has this little state here where so long as the jump allowance, which is a timer counting down, is more than whatever you set the jump buffer to, so I just set it to three as you saw, then for every frame it takes away time.delta time. So that's basically every frame up, that basically is what portion of a second is this frame happening in. So one second this will go down by one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Um, and then when it eventually counts down past that point, then it goes on to the next stage where it finally sets grounded to false and animated grounded to false and you can no longer jump because now jump is out here and you can only jump if grounded is true and jump also sets grounded to false so that you know when you press jump, it will definitely be set to false so you're not able just to jump again and again and vertical speed and all that set there and then everything else is the same here. So that's how we have the jump buffer. It's a little bit of extra stuff in there, but it is worth doing. If I just scroll up, you can see there the jump grounded, jump allowance, and I've thrown in uh, the jump buffer here with the other settings that are visible. I don't actually need vertical speed. Serialized field makes things physical, uh, private variables visible in the inspector. Don't need it for some of these, but they're just there because it's easier to feedback, but I would delete them after a while. Uh, the only other thing here, which I think, is it still here? Ah, yes, here it is. The um, other thing here that's been added in is this vertex lerp. That's where the acceleration comes into things. And that's basically just a value I added in that I go here and if I reduce it to one so it's more obvious. There you go. You see that the acceleration value makes it so that when I change the direction, that's the green line here is where I'm actually pointing to and the purple line is basically the actual movement catching up to the green line. Reducing acceleration means you can kind of add a bit of extra drag in your motion and to achieve that all, I, all you do is you just make a movement here, just add a lerp so that um, the lerp is like slurp and all the other things, it just goes between basically into, I forgot what, goes between two values, I can't remember the word at the moment, which is bad, but anyway, goes between two vector values over an amount of time, and that's just how we get that to happen. So it's a nice extra little effect we've got there. And I think with that, that is everything really here. Uh, the actual project includes this kind of basic orbiting camera that when the cat moves away far enough, it starts following. So it's not immediately following, you can sell it to immediately follow if you want, it has just a basic clamped orbit, which I think I've hopefully explained in the code there. And in this version of the game, we've also just got basic uh, collecting of these gears for the little script here called player stats, which there you go, it's just very simple code on trigger enter. When colliding with an object, the tag of gear, add to the gear value and update the scoreboard, destroy the gear object. So that's all that's there. So that's all for the things I forgot in the main tutorial. Um, so yeah, I will be trying to upload, I'll be looking into how I can actually get this project on GitHub and when it's available, I'll add a link where people can download this project if they want to actually look at the code and see the other scenes. There's, if I go there, there's quite a few scenes in this project just kind of demonstrating different movement systems and different ways to interact with uh, player systems using mostly move position, add force, and the catch controller, which if I go here, you can kind of begin to see some of the differences here, like the catch controller on the right can go up these steps. There's some pros and cons. I'll be doing, um, I'll hopefully be doing maybe four more videos just going over some of these different character things in Unity, 
there'd be less practical and more just discussing different ways you could do things without going through the code. But if I can get this project available online, you'll be able to go through the coding yourself. So I hope all of this has been helpful. Uh, keep an eye out for the other videos that will go over the other things. And hopefully I'll have this available soon. Ta. Yeah. <laughs>